Hey, Tyler here, Theater Design Company, Tech Tuesday, week number 13. Uh, first thing, if you want to jump forward, just jump right into this uh, tech video. It's going to be on a Samsung 55-inch frame with the One Connect box, and it's going to start at this time. So look above, I've highlighted it. And what this video is going to entail is a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure of installing a Samsung 55-inch frame. Uh, Sanus or Legrand One Connect in-wall box can be the 17-inch version. And then we're using a mid-light power kit. You can use the power kit of your choice. I've got a few linked below. I've also got the Sanus box linked below, as well as uh, all the Samsung frame TVs and accessories. Amazon's generally the best place to buy these unless you're local to Washington State. And then you can buy the Samsung frames for us. We offer free delivery, offer a fair install price on these. And we've done, I don't know, maybe 150 frame TVs now. So we pretty much know what we're doing on them. We've got all the little tricks down. And anyway, hope you liked the video. We're going to jump off into it and uh, kind of go from step by step on this. Thanks a lot. All right, so let's dive into this. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure you got all your tools handy. You don't need a whole lot of tools to do this. Keyhole saw, drill, tape measure, pencil, um, some basic electrical tools to make that connection between the uh, mid-light power adapter. And other than that, it's pretty much DIY hand tools. Uh, so step one is going to be to check your studs. So first thing you want to do is make sure your one connect box is going to even fit. Uh, so check your studs. 14 and a half inches is minimum between left and right. And then you need 17 and a half inches top to bottom. And so now we'll get ready our Sanus one connect box. Get that thing unboxed. Get all our packaging, our template, everything good to go. And then what we do is you'll see here is we cut a small... Uh, double gang ring size in so we can put a double gang cover plate over assuming there's an obstacle or something else um, We have an we have a back out option We have a way to you know not destroy the customers wall with a two gang ring You can put your hand in there. You can fill around make sure there's no obstacles You can also put a phone in there. Don't drop your phone But you can point the phone down take some pictures make sure you can get power down to the outlet and everything else So those are the first two steps stud find cut your single gang uh, or Excuse me cut your double gang ring in and then we'll move on to step number three. All right, so step number three, we're gonna get our uh, template out. We've already got our double gang uh, opening cut, so we've confirmed there's nothing in there. We can uh, easily get our box in. And then what we're gonna do is a uh, couple, one little trick here. We're gonna basically, we can slide our tape measure into the hole and find our first stud, and then pull that measurement over to mark our left of our template. Then we're gonna use a level to keep our template nice and level, and we're gonna pencil that out. And then we're using our plastic bag here to keep our dust down to a minimum. And as you can see, we've got this thing cut in. So then our next steps, we've kind of got this where we want. We're going to go out and get our One Connect box prepped. So in this case, we notice that there is a B vent for the fireplace that's a little close. It's not touching it, but it's close. So we've done two things. We're going to foil back the uh, back of our One Connect box. And then you can see we've cut in our uh, single gang ring for our power. And then our next step is we've uh, moved back into the house. We've actually installed this unit. I do like to put the cover plate on first before installing it. As you can see, the little wings will pop out and lock it in with the drywall. And so now we've checked our power. We've done all our power steps. I'm not going to go into the video and show you power. There's too many different ways to do it. Uh, that'll be up to you. I'd still recommend hiring an electrician or using the power bridge. And then let's move on to the Samsung frame portion of things. All right, so step number seven, we've unboxed the TV. We've uh, set aside our brackets here with our uh, plastic sleeves or our plastic stickers that go on the back of the TV first. Those are important. Don't throw those out. Install those. That's what lets the bracket slide up and down a little bit easier for adjusting it left and right. We've done them without on accident, and it doesn't end up very well. And then what we want to do is get our paper template out. We're going to want to mark that for 55 inch. Pretty self-explanatory, but the arrows point to each other. Tape those up, and then to get center, this is an important step, just fold that over and mark your center. So that's your uh, basically step number seven is to get those things prepped and ready to go. All right, so step number nine, assuming you've got your brackets on, you got your template folded over, we're going to want to measure from the bottom of the TV up to the silver part of the bracket that swivels. We're going to want to have that pushed into the TV as if it was an installed item. And that's going to give us our measurement from the bottom of the TV to the spot allocated on the template of where that same exact bracket goes. That's gonna be your secondary pieces that came in your bracket kit. And we're gonna get that template taped on there. We now know the bottom of our TV, where we want it to reside, and we know where that bracket's gonna land. So now we can center out our template and move on to the next step. 
So step number 10, I like to jump forward a little bit and I like to get the one connect box installed. Uh, the reason for that is if you get in the smaller, like 43 inch, 50 inch, even the 55 inch, sometimes you're gonna have to span that mounting bracket that came from Samsung over the top of the uh, in-wall enclosure. So it's just easier now to get that thing installed and a little bit of plastic bag over it, keep it dust free. Um, and then I wanna highlight, I like to use the Velcro that comes with the One Connect kit and uh, let's Velcro the One Connect box in. Get that powered up, get your uh, power cord tied up. Don't put the fiber optic or the power cable in yet. Do that at the very last step and then we'll move on to step number 11. So step number 11, I'm not gonna bore you physically mounting the two brackets, but as you can see, we've got them mounted here. In our case, we used uh, Hilti togglers. Um, I'll show you a link on those in the bottom, but allows you to put a half inch hole in, uh, slide a toggler in, pull them, pull them back, and they, they're actually pretty secure. We'll use those up to a 55 inch. Um, any more than that, like 65, 75, 85, we pretty much want to hit studs. Um, but if you have a half inch bit and you have the ability to do that, the togglers work just fine on a frame. Never use the togglers on articulating mount for any reason. They will pull through. And then obviously a larger display or a heavier display. Don't use the togglers. There's no reason to do it. All right. So your final step is just to put the uh, one connect cable in and install your TV. So you can see here, we've got a finished product. We've got a teak surround on it. We have no holes in the wall, super clean, simple install. Anyway, hope you like this Tech Tuesday. Hope it'll help you out. Maybe somehow we can get your uh, Samsung frame installed yourself. If not, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks a lot. We'll